In this video, I'm going to talk about collision detection in Havoc, which is the process of determining when bodies overlap and generating contact points for them. Collision detection is a major part of both the functionality and the computational cost of a physics engine, and every game needs different things from it, so Havoc offers many ways to control its behavior and manage its performance. This is a large subject, so this video will begin with just shapes, and future videos will cover more. Also, the earlier video on dynamics covers some important information about how collision fits into the simulation, so if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching that one first. Shapes are the way that you define the geometry of objects in the physics world. There are many different ways of representing that geometry. We can use polygonal models, like those used in graphics, but there are also simpler representations, like boxes and spheres, that are less expensive to collide and are often sufficient approximations. Generally speaking, the physical representation of your world, especially the dynamic parts of it, will be lower fidelity than the visual representation. Let's take a look at some basic shape types. This demo shows six different kinds, each represented in a different way. We have a box shape, which is a rectangular prism defined by its three dimensions, a sphere shape, which is defined by its radius, and note that even though it doesn't look smooth visually, in the physics simulation it's treated as a perfectly round object. Next we have a flat triangle, defined by three points, a convex vertices shape, which is a convex hull around a collection of points, a cylinder shape, which has a length and a radius, and a capsule, which is just a cylinder with rounded caps on the ends. Now if I jostle these around, we can see that all these different types of shapes are able to collide with each other, even though they're all represented in different ways. To make this work, Havoc Physics implements many different collision detection algorithms and chooses the right one based on the shapes that are being tested. These are known as collision agents. Some agents work on specific pairs of shape types. For example, there's an agent that tests collisions between two boxes, another that tests boxes against spheres, and so on. Other agents are more generalized. All of the shapes here are convex, and there's an agent that can test collisions between any pair of convex shapes, so we use that whenever there isn't a more specialized agent available. There are factors other than shape type that determine which collision agent is used, and it's actually possible to customize when different agents are used and even write new ones, but most of the time all you need to do is register the agents that come with the SDK using the utility function HKP Agent Register Util Register All Agents. This will ensure that any shapes you create can be collided against each other. To create more complex shapes, we need to combine these primitives together, and to do this Havoc provides container shapes, which are shapes that have other shapes as children. In this demo, I've created cars out of simpler shapes using two types of containers, list shapes and transform shapes. List shapes are what they sound like, a list of shapes that are all treated as a single shape together. As you can see, the individual pieces of each car are fixed in position relative to each other, and a collision with any one piece affects the entire body. But in addition to combining the shapes, I also need to position them, so each of the pieces is also wrapped in a transform shape that describes its location and orientation. So the full hierarchy of shapes is a list shape of several transform shapes, each of which contains a basic shape. Note that shapes can be reused multiple times in the hierarchy. Each of the wheels in the car is a different transform shape, because they're all in different positions, but they all point to the same cylinder shape. Now that we're using a container of multiple shapes, collision detection is a bit more complicated. Each car is still a single rigid body, and therefore has a single AABB in the broad phase, but when we get to the narrow phase, we have to test each shape in the car for collision. If two cars' AABBs overlap, then we have to test all of their shapes pairwise. Now the cars are small and contain only a few shapes, so this is not a big deal, but when you consider larger bodies like landscapes that have a huge number of child shapes and overlap most bodies in the broad phase, the cost becomes prohibitive. Keep in mind that if you have a landscape mesh, each triangle in the mesh is a child. To manage performance in these cases, Havoc has bounding volume trees. Bounding volume trees provide mid-phase collision tests that are more complicated than the AABB checks in the broad phase, but they can save a huge amount of narrow phase work for certain types of shapes like landscapes. In this demo, when we test the box against the mesh, we only have to do full collision checks on a small subset of the triangles, because the mid-phase rules the rest out. A bounding volume is just a volume that contains an object, and a bounding volume tree is essentially a spatial tree, in which each node is a bounding volume that contains all of its children, down to the individual shapes of the leaves. We can search the tree for potential collisions without examining every leaf. This is a big subject, so I won't go into detail about how bounding volume trees work here, but there's lots of material about them available online. Havoc's bounding volume tree is a highly optimized BSP tree called a MOP, M-O-P-P. -P. A MOP is a container shape, so to use it you make it the parent of the shape that you want to apply it to. Setting it up is pretty simple. First we call HKP MOP utility build code to generate the tree from our shape. Then we build the MOP shape itself, passing in both the child shape and the code that we just generated. We can now create a rigid body using this shape. Generally, all large static shapes should be wrapped in an HKP MOP BV tree shape. But note that while testing a simple shape against a complex MOP is efficient, it's still very expensive to test two complex shapes against each other, so large and detailed dynamic MOPs should be avoided. Building a physical representation of your world that behaves as desired while performing smoothly can be a complex task. 
In this overview, we've looked at the basic structure of shapes, how shape hierarchies are built, and how to use a mid-phase, but there's much more detail available in the docs, as well as demos that illustrate all of the different shapes available.